Good morning, welcome to Natasha Makes. If you are watching this, hello, happy Monday to you. Uh, this is a pre-record for you this morning because we are um, with Jane doing our Zoom workshop for the subscribers to her block of the month. But we wanted to still bring you a show because I was much upset last time when we didn't go live and lots of you concerned as to where we were. So good morning, I hope you're well. Today what we have for you on the show are some fabulous Tilda kits. Now this is now the last of our Tilda fabrics. It has come in and and gone out within a week. It has been incredible. So if you've already bought your Tilda, then you've got projects there ready to go. If you haven't and you just fancy having a go at a project, we're limited on the kit numbers because it's the end of the stock now. Um, but what we've got is what we've got and please do enjoy them. So all of these patterns are available for free at tildersworld.com. But if you are buying a kit from us today, we will print that off and we will send it to you so that you have it um, and you don't have to rummage around. Now, if you are a subscriber, then this will be um, on your subscription members area and we will put a link there uh, to to the pattern that I've used today can't say better than that so let's have a look then at what we've got shall we we have got first of all um, and because these look like Indian runner ducks they're not their geese but they do remind me of our Indian runner ducks these are your winter geese but any time of year these geese will work and you've got enough for the big one now the big one is really tall like this tall it's big it's big we're going to make the smaller one today but that is the big one and you get the template and everything in here you get your fabric for the large one your fabric for the small one oodles of spare fabric for the beak and the feet on both ones and then you get way more fabric than you need um, for the scarves as well so you've got extra there so maybe if you've already bought fat quarters or half meters you've got enough there to accessorize and make more should you wish but that is your first bundle of the day your second bundle of the day are these now this is your creating memories summer starfish these are beautiful you can just have these in the bathroom you could fill them with lavender maybe however you want to use them um, maybe you want to use them as paperweights and fill them with rice it's entirely up to you but we are going to send you as a lucky dip of um, six 10 inch squares you don't need that much fabric at all you can do this with your scraps if you're working out your own stash but we wanted to bring you the chance to make lots of them so that is um, another kit for you that's just 8.99 you can't really go wrong with that now <clears throat> the stuffing tools are on their way in they'll be here tomorrow but these are the tilda toys and they're just fabulous and i really want to make the pig out of this pink spot so what you've got is your you could probably make two actually if you're careful about how you cut you could probably get two pigs out of this um, this is your Tilda pig and you also have a stuffing tool because these little limbs are very, very narrow and the stuffing tool is just the thing for that. But like I say, they are due in tomorrow to go with these kits ready to go out. And then the frog, when Tilda brought out these woven fabrics, I just thought, yes, 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 yes. A frog needs to be done out of that as well. So we've got pigs and the frogs. And again, we'll print off that pattern, send it with you, send you the stuffing tool as well. You cannot say fairer than that. And then lastly, another one that I just wish I had the time to make. I might just make the time to make. And these are your whales. You have got enough fabric here to make three of the large whales. You can mix it up however you wish. So you could make one large whale and then multiple of the other ones. It's entirely up to you. But these are the fabrics. These are the sizes. These are the whales. The pattern's there you go for it what a lovely 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 kit and that's going to look fabulous in somebody's bedroom somewhere now the other things that i would recommend are your fiber fill your toy filling here uh, we're also going to need for the goose we're going to need some rice because we want him to stand up he's going to be a door stopper here at natasha makes so i'm very excited about that this is really 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 useful i've restocked on these these are your seam marker sets you're also going to want a fabric pen that you can iron out that's going to disappear. Template plastic is also incredibly useful for any of these that you're going to make multiple times. Okay, so without further ado, let's do the goose. I'm going to do the small goose 
But this is how it all comes. Now, you know that we print onto really great quality card anyway, so you're not gonna have to retrace this onto good, good quality. We've already done it. Now you can see there, there's your A, B mark. And so we're gonna just go around there. Like so. Now the thing with this is that you can make this out of, the main body will come out of a fat quarter for this size. So it's not actually a very expensive make. It's just having those other fabrics for the feet, for the beak and the, and the scarf. And like I say, in your kits, you have got enough to make multiple of these. Now you can see here, And of course, they're going to look great in any of the fabrics as well. This joins up. So that A, B line there, that all joins up. And then you can just sellotape that in place. I tend to just pop a little line on the back as well. And then you can finish off cutting. Now this line that we're cutting on is the stitch line. There is no seam allowance added, okay? And that's always the case with Tilda's patterns um, when it comes down to her toy making. So please just bear that in mind. The, the solid line is your stitch line, which is why the seam maker set is just an absolute godsend. There we go, okay. And then we need a foot. ES means extra seam. If you're looking at that, wondering what the ES means on here, that means extra seam. And that means that when you've made it, you can fold that under and then hand stitch on. So they are all the parts that we need for our goose. Okay, now. Like I say, you can transfer that onto template plastic and then you're gonna use that again and again and again and that will fit onto A4. If you're using the larger one, then you're gonna need a couple of a couple, and they will fit on that way, but you're going to need to um, sellotape them together to create that larger template. Uh, now what we have here, these are your seam markers. So if I show you how this is gonna work, When we have, for example, if we just press that fabric. And then just wait for that to cool. So I'm going right sides together with these. And the first thing that I will do is draw around. Okay. And you'll do this twice because he wants to have two feet. But then to add the seam, all you do is run that around there and that gives you, and this is where you might wanna work with the template plastic just because it's a little bit more robust. And this is giving me a seven mil seam allowance. So you see it sits in there. So 
So now I have my stitch mark and I have my seam allowance. I also with these like to use little pins if I can find them. Here we go. So these are my applique pins and they are really, really, really useful because they just are so tiny so they're not going to get in the way. And I can just pin these together and then cut them out. Now on little things like this, and if you're making something like the pig or the um, frog, then you would just place these right sides together um, and you would sew them as is. And so what I might just do there is cut and then we'll sew on that seam and then we know that we've got the right seam allowance to cut out. And so we're going to do the same here. And again, if we do this on the template plastic, it actually has, it holds more integrity, so it's much easier to add that seam allowance. So if you want to then, if it's easier for you to get under the machine, then you can. But the seam allowance is then added, like I say, very, very cleverly with this little tool. And it's just going around those corners that it just would be beneficial to have this on the template plastic instead. Okay, so that's my other foot done. Now we're not going to sew across the top on these. That's going to be our turning through bit. So turning through tools are an absolute godsend with anything sort of tildery like this. So let's get the feet and the scarf done. So the scarf is just one piece of fabric and we will just put that right sides together and sew down one side and across the other there. Now, what Tilda does recommend is that you take down your stitch length because there's going to be a little bit of tight turning here. So 1.6, 1.8 works an absolute treat here. Okay, so we are all goosed up and ready to go. Let's do that scarf to start off with. So we'll fold that in half. Put my seam allowance on a quarter of an inch. this if you want and there's no problem with that. So I've set my seam to quarter of an inch and then when I get to the end I'm just going to turn and then sew off the end there. I'm going to snip away any excess at the corners and I'll get my turning through tool in a minute for that. Now, what I'm going to do with the feet, and so you can see you've got the seam allowance on there, you've got that all drawn on. I'm going to take my needle so that it's sitting right in the middle. I really need to clean my machine, it's very fluffy. Um, and we're going to start up here. So I can really see where I'm going with this foot. And I'm going to sew down, and I can just start to take these little pins out. They are very good at not getting in the way. Just slowly. Now, if you are struggling to see with that foot, then something like this would also work. So yeah, pick pick the foot that is going to work for you. Whatever your machine comes with. This one might be a little bit easier for me just to see what I'm doing and where I'm going. Okay. 
but again this is why as we go around corners you want that shorter stitch length and slow and steady wins the day here when I reset my machine it lengthens my stitch so it's actually much easier to get round with a shorter stitch length I'll show you the difference in a minute I'll start to get these out now as well so you can see here it's more clumpy whereas around here with the shorter stitch I can actually follow those curves I was going out saying can you I'm sure I shortened my stitch and if you do have that function to leave your needle in, perfect. So that's one. So yeah, 1.6 stitch length is going to just work an absolute treat here for you. down and just keep on turning a few little stitches and then you can turn especially going around that toe I love these geese so we've just hatched gorgeous um, pom-pom runner ducks and they do stand up right like geese so, and also I made Emily one of these years and years and years ago, and I do mean years and years and years ago, and it has got a little bit battered now, so it is time for a little upgrade. So when I saw that Tilda had done these in the reds and the greens, I was just like, yes, 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 that will be absolutely beautiful. So there we have it, and you can see that where my stitch length is short all the way round, it's much, much better than where it was longer here, and it's a little bit clumpy just round that toe. So I might just go back in on that toe with that shorter stitch length, just to smooth it out. There we go. Okay, so now what we can do is cut them out. So on that seam line, I would just go in, I tend to cut out to toys with pinking shears to stop any fray and also just to help get those lovely curves. But it is up to you. And if you need to clip a little bit extra into those curves, and it does show you in the pattern where she would clip in a little bit, a little bit closer. So you might want to clip in a little bit closer just in these curves here and through here. Up to not into the stitches, just be really careful with that. Um, but then because of pink, we've already reduced a lot of that bolt anyway. So let's find ourselves a little turning through tool. Hmm, what have I done with all of mine? That is the next question. Turning tools come in various different sizes. I'm going to suggest we go for the little ones here. And all you're going to do pop it inside there and then just poke through. If you have to force it at any point, go with the blunt end, okay? And it might be that by the time, there you go, you don't actually need to take that all the way through the tool to be able to just roll that down and through. But these are an absolute godsend for any Tilda toy make. They really are. 
they're a game changer. I didn't have one when I first started making Tilda toys, and my goodness, many a, many a, <laughs> an hour spent. There we go. So that is one little foot. Hmm, aren't they gorgeous? And then let's do the other little foot. So turning tool in. You can start off with the pokey end. Push it through a little bit more with the flat end. And then if it's not going to go through, just turn it and then just roll it down on that stick. And this might be your very first foray into toy making. Tilda toys are pretty much the only toys now that I make. Because they really are. It's not working with tricky fabrics, it's just working with cotton, which I'm used to anyway. So that's always a winner. Just easing out those toes. I'm going to give that a little press. So on the template, you've got these little bits here. Um, and these are your stitch lines. So that you will stuff into the toes but leave the web bits unstuffed so what you do now and again use a tool use a pen that you can then remove and just mark that line on the feet take it back to the machine and stitch those. Now you might want to have a little bit of thread first, just to take up the slack. And I've chosen a thread colour the same as the um, plaid that is coming through here. Now I use this piece of um, cotton, quite a donkey, just so that I can just stitch onto without having all all those threads that you can often get otherwise but it is it's just a sort of a sacrificial piece of thread it means that the tension's already taken up with the machine and I will do a little back stitch there just to hold it to there and then just snip and snip and there you have your foot with your stitch lines around and I will then press that to get rid of those markings so let's do that on the other foot <clears throat> Oops. 
who are very clever about how you do it, you can then just come round. So off here. And so onto there, but it just means you don't get, like I said, that bird's nesting. some fine feet going on very very fine feet um, let's give those a little press and the pressing will just get rid of the marks and then you can stuff them now when you stuff them if you look back on your um, template there is a line to, to mark up to to stuff up to so I just mark that off on there they need stuffing. Now you can stuff these with anything. Fibre fill is the best. You're going to need um, your stick to poke it in or if you've got the filling tool that is the best and uh, you'll just it is a little bit fiddly, I'm not going to lie which is why and I kind of wish that the filling tool had come into stock because it sort of grabs it and takes it down into where it is that you need it to go because this otherwise can be a little bit fiddly it's just getting it in there initially but you can take your time to get that in. It's often something to do in front of the TV. But when it does start to go, then that's absolutely fine. And then you just want to start to stuff, go to sort of the furthest point and stuff. And you can see then your foot starts to take shape. And it's not going to take a lot. It's really not. But it does just take a little bit of patience. Like I say, if you do have that tool, it came with the pig and the frog, then you are laughing. This is much easier already for you. I have one somewhere. I just can't remember where. Like I say, this, it's not a lot of stuffing for these feet. And then we're going to look at doing the body. These aren't, it's not that these are long makes, but they are again, they're something that does look very, very beautiful when it's done and that you will keep for years. Like I say, Emily has had hers as a door stuffer for years. It just got a little bit ragged by the puppy not going to lie, and a little bit chewed. So it's time for a replacement one. And the thing is, they do make great door stops. Really nice door stops. But for that, that's why we've got the rice. And normally if I have Jane here, I'll be like, Jane, can you just fill these feet, please, while I carry on making the rest of it? Mm, it starts to go. When it goes, it just suddenly sort of folds and goes in. say fill to the furthest point first so 
So that's all the sort of toe bits done. And then I've just got to fill up to that line there. Now normally if you are stuffing um, arms or legs or anything like that, you would normally sort of pull this apart and make sure that it's um, not clumpy in any way, shape or form. But this is a toe and a, you know, a foot, a duck foot would be a little bit bony. I say duck, it's a goose, but you know what I mean. Um, as I have ducks, I can tell you their feet are a little bit bony, so I'm not, I'm not sort of floofing this apart to then fill. get on with the rest of the goose. And that mark that we had on our pattern, the ES, that is to there. So we can just fold that seam under and that's what that is there for. That is your extra seam. You don't fill it to that mark. You use that to turn under and you can sew that up or you might find that that will then tuck up into the goose. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so we had, what did I do with it? Ah. This is the scarf. So again, turning through tool here just makes life so much easier. There it is. So just ease out those corners. Give it a little press. And again, that end you can tuck under, you can hand stitch that shut, or you can top stitch all of this and sew that shut. It's up to you how you want to do that. I think Tilda herself, I think she just hand stitches that shut, but I know a lot of you are not a fan of hand stitching. Let's give that a little press. Making sure that's equal. And I just keep the seam to one side. Like I say, if you want to top stitch around it, then you can. You can increase your stitch length to do that. But this isn't vital, you don't have to, you can, like I say, just kind of stitch that up if you prefer. and that is our scarf ready to go. So let's look at how we're going to do the main body of the goose. And for this you're going to need a fat quarter of fabric. Let me just wait. And I will place them 
sides together. Now you can give that a little press if you want. And you can see here, a fat quarter is absolutely, absolutely plenty. In fact, I do wonder if... I think if you could almost fit two on. don't know. I'd have to check that. Anyway, um, for the meantime, you will have leftover fabric. So we're going to draw around... Around here, and I'm going to mark here and here. That's where the beak is going to be. Okay, so you mark, and again, if you want to make these multiple times, please do put this onto template plastic. This is a dotted line. I'm going to leave that for now. And because of the beak, you are going to have to rough cut this out. Okay. Now, what I what I would do. For me, um, is I would um, I would add my seam allowance now. Like otherwise, you're just making work twice for yourself. And the the goose is big enough. that it's not going to be a super fine seam allowance anyway. And again, if you're working with something other than template plastic, that's really helpful. Um, well, okay. Okay. So, oh, it helps if I actually do it all the way around, doesn't it? So this is your sewing line, which is around here, and then we're adding on this seam allowance. There we go. Okay. And again, I'm going to pin. Actually, no, I'm not going to pin. I tell a lie, I'm not going to pin. I'm just going to cut out for now. We will pin later. But first of all, we've got to add that beak fabric on. But if you cut them in a one together, and I would fold the beak on that line. So that you know where that sewing line is for the beak. Lots of lovely fabric left over there. She's always very, very generous with the amounts you need for these kits. There's no scrimping here. But if you want to use a bigger seam allowance, then you use one of the other seam things. <coughs> and then you can just cut down there. Now, 
what we're going to get is some more of... Are we done with it? Ba -ba 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 -ba. This is your beak fabric. I'm give it a quick press. So it's the same as the feet. Or you might want to mix it up a little bit and tie it up to you. And go with a different fabric. But what you will need to do is make sure that you are cutting a big enough piece. And again, you can mark that same line on there if you want. Now I do cut this a bit rougher and a bit bigger. Okay, um, but this is gonna go then right sides together and the reason I make it bigger is just in case I don't quite get the angle right. Okay, so we're going to go right sides together. Pop a little pin in. And we're going to stitch on that line, just on that line, not into the seam. We don't need to stitch into the seam. I mean, you can if you want to. Um, but here we go. Let's stitch straight across there. In fact, you can, yeah, stitch with that shorter seam allowance. Stitch down there. And then what you'll have... Then you can press that, finger press that open. And then you can go in and you've got enough leeway for your beak. Okay. So let's do that then on the other side. So you're going to flip your template. And this is where for me, rather than rough cutting it as Tilda does in her pattern, and this is just makes life easier for me. I know that if I sit that equally in there, then I've got my equal seam allowance. And then I'm going to mark up across there. That's going to be my beak. I'm going to mark that on there and sew, like I say, straight across. press that line and then when I put these back right sides together because I have already cut it accurately on the seam using my seam guide everything matches up an awful lot more easily and then I put the head I know that I can match up the beaks and the head and that all just works an absolute treat. Pop a little pin in there. Now before I go too much further with this, what I will do is come back in and now mark. And actually it is pretty spot on. And then when we're going to sew it together, again, short stitch length, sewing all the way around, and we're going to leave these bits where we had dotted line, not solid lines, we're going to leave that bit open and we're going to um, fill from there. 
okay? So we're going to sew all the way round now, starting from here, going all the way round. And hopefully I've pinned my pins far enough away that they're not going to interfere and I don't have to constantly stop to get the pins out. That is the beauty of these little um, applique pins they are. But again, just using a foot that means that you can absolutely see where you're going. Really, really helps here. Going slow and steady round the beak. And then like the little pin that I do now starts to take out. A new needle is always a bonus here so that you are nice and sharp. Starting and stopping from that bottom point, you do actually get a nice long run at things before you have to tackle any curves. Snip in, so you can snip into these curves. I, like I say, I tend to pink um, all the way around. That's sort of my my go-to. Then it doesn't fray either, and it's just incredibly handy then. Yeah, having a good pair of pinking shoes with any of these makes is always, always a winner. You can always save your scraps and use them for a spot of stuffing as well. So then, we're going to want to turn this through. If you have someone with small fingers in the house who would use a little tool like this gently, use them. Just use them. <laughs> and then they feel involved too. So 
So again, I'm going to go in with the blunter end of my wooden stick. She's gonna look fabulous. And look, we've got that beak spot on. I'm very excited by that. So just easing that beak out. Now you can give that a good press before we start to stuff. And you can see these curves are nice and rounded from where we've used our, um, our pinking shears. Give her a lovely little press, she's rather fabulous. Like I say, she is the smaller of the two start to see the large one, excuse my scribbles on there, that's that's the comparison, she is much smaller. Um, and so again, if you've got a tool for stuffing, use it, use it, use it. I'm so annoyed because I do have one, I do have one and I just can't find it right now which is just the most annoying thing in the world. It really is. And I know I'm going to find it the minute that we come off air. We're like, oh yeah, no, look, there it is. There it is, that's really useful. No, I don't need it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Or like I say, find someone with little fingers and you're going to stuff. You're going to stuff to the furthest point. And this is going to take a little bit of doing, but that's what you're going to do. And then once that is stuffed, you will then tie on and you can just stitch that in place, but again, stuff it all first. The other thing is this. So grab yourself a scrap of fabric. If you want this to stand up, I did grab myself a scrap of fabric. Can I find it? Absolutely not. Uh, so <laughs> let's use some of this leftover um, here. And what I would just say is, all you're gonna do is make yourself a little pouch for some rice. And this absolutely does not need to be pretty. Um, in fact, I think Tilda just topped off the stuffing with rice. But I'm gonna put mine in a little baggie. All that's going to do is just add weight to the bottom. I'm, you know, sending this absolutely everywhere. I guess you could if you wanted to as well. Pop a little bit of rice in the feet. But I'm just going to sew across there to just hold that together. Mm -hmm. 
nem maradka. Bag. Like it's like giblets. <laughs> I can pop in there and stuff around, but make sure that that sits at the bottom. And that's going to hold it down. Uh, give it a little bit of weight there. Okay. And then when she's all stuffed and everything else, then this comes across here. So it's like boxing the bottom of a bag. You will turn that seam under like so. Now with that extra seam, you can either sew it under and sew the feet on there, or if you want to, you can keep that extra seam out and pop it in and stitch through so that the feet then sit there. Like so. And there she will be. So, there's a lot of stuffing to do, which I'm going to go away and do. Um, and then with the eye, you can either do a little French knot, or if your French knots aren't up to it, just a little bit of black marker pen on that eye. But there you go. She will have a lovely little tie on there. This will all be filled. And there she will be. So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Grab your kits. Uh, like I say, if you're buying from us, then we will make sure that you get these printed off on good quality paper so you can use them as templates. If you are making more than one, grab yourself some template plastic as well because that does make all the difference. Um, trust me on that. Um, so, yeah, but enjoy them. They're just fun and they make a beautiful addition to any room. So, lots of love. Take care. Thank you for watching.